I'm not really used to doing all this, so we'll just get started. Uh, about three or four years ago, I got laid off at work, and about a year into it, we figured out we had to have something to come up with some more money. So we did some research, and one thing or another, so we decided we had to add fish to it. Um, made several trips, uh, come to Jeff City, got a hold of Chuck Hicks and Russ Gerlock over there, which has been our aces for quite a while in all of this. We did a lot of research, and our biggest problem was financing. We got all of our paperwork together and went to the bank, and they was not, there's no history of it in our area. And I like to make this one little story. A year before, we ran pretty well all John Deere equipment. We wanted to do an upgrade on a tractor. I made a phone call, and I got approved for 45000 over loan over the phone to, make, to buy, go buy a tractor the next day. We put this all together, and I need 26 to get this all together. And they, had, they went to the board members. It took two weeks to get approved for it. And that was bottom line. There is no history. Anyway, we've been going at this. We finally got started. We're short on time, so I'm just going to talk. And if anybody has anything to ask, just go. We got started in May of 2010. And this is what we started off with. We had one pond that we was going to use, four and a half acres. Uh, right up against the bank, it's 12 and a half foot deep, so that's where we got started. We got more, but that's where we ended up. We stretched two cables clear across it. We didn't have a clue how I was going to do that, and there was a feed truck sitting there, so. As time went on, we started building our cages. They're four by four by eight, uh, coated chicken wire. We got a PVC sewer pipe along the top there for float rings, and we put a feed ring inside of it. And all this time, we're pretty dumb. We've all grown up on farms, thought fish was no big deal, but we found out we didn't know a thing. So we put in, we put in uh, 14 cages our first year. Okay, there is a, I think it's June the 6th, we bought 10,000 hybrid bluegills to put into them. The two aerators we bought uh, from Kansas City, they're like uh, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 each. Our biggest cost of getting started, we had to run primary electricity almost a quarter mile. So we went $5,000 right off the top. Of, we didn't know if we was going to make a penny. Uh, <laughs> that was our first experience. We gave $0.52 cents the first year, plus freight on them. $0.52 cents a piece. Yeah. But we found out on our second and third year, 90% of fish are hatched in southern Missouri and in Arkansas. We did a little more research and a few phone calls. When we restocked, it was 26 cents. We found out not everybody's out there to help us out, you know. So anyway, it gets better. That, that was one first. There's a picture of Chuck Hicks and Russ Gerlock. They've been our aces since day one. This is like in July after we got started and they come over and just see how things was going. They've been over, they brought some of their students over to see what we're doing. Um, we went to a prawn harvest in, uh, can you remember where we went for that? I don't remember, it was down in southern Missouri. Everybody kept talking about the prawns. We ought to get into the prawns. We didn't know what the heck a prawn was, but that's every time we turned around, they said that's what we ought to do. There's big money in them. So we went to our first harvest in September. Uh, they was all right. They was kind of small. Uh, they're basically, they, they're known as freshwater shrimp. Uh, Mary looked up some stuff this year on the computer, and they call them lobsterettes now. That's their nicknames. Um, October, we went over to Jeff City down at the Culver Farm, and they had their harvest of them. And we was a lot more impressed with them. These are some of the students that helps them down there at the farm. Russ and Chuck has got a wonderful relationship with these kids. I think they all just grow up together. These guys here that they raise come out at nine per pound. So they're, they're significant. You can actually see. So then we're sitting here thinking, well, now we wouldn't mind trying this, but then we're back to the same deal. How are we going to get the bank to go along with this story, you know? The prawn's something they ain't never even heard of. So the best thing we did, I think we brought home about 50 pounds. We passed them out mostly that night. 
we got around and about a week or so later we invited the, boy, the bank to come down and have lunch with us. Uh, Mary fixed lunch. I introduced, this is Mary. I'm going, she's my assistant, assailant, and cohort on about all these projects. So she's the one that does it when I'm not there. Anyway, we brought the bank down and she had these all fixed up and nice dinner and everything. And when we got done, the bank president had never been to our place. We got, we do a local bank, so we deal basically with one loan officer. Uh, he'd been down for farm visits and everything, but the president, he'd come down and he brought three other loan officers with him. They hung around in the afternoon and we went down to the ponds and toured it. They got ready to leave. The president walked up to me and shook my hand. He says, well, you tell Danny what you need. So that pretty well got us in by fixing him dinner. We went to Ava, Missouri. We got thinking we could raise some trout in the winter months when our water cooled off. So we went down to... Oh, I can't find all my notes. Oh, Marvin and David Emerson. I'm losing track here. Um, they raised trout farm in Ava. It's a beautiful place. This is their office house. You'll notice right here, this is a spring that comes up back over here and actually runs underneath their... This is an office out here. And this is a spring that runs right underneath their house. It is, it's beautiful. We spent the day down there with them, had lunch, of course. That's some of their incubation. So we decided that we was going to try it. We come home and we built a pen in our pond that we had. And once again, we didn't know what the heck we was doing. So we just started in. We built uh, eight-foot panels, 20-foot long, out of PVC pipe and coated them. Drove some pipe in the pond. We did have to put some uh, construction fence up here because we found out they'd jump. We put our fence in at water level. And we thought, well, this is stupid. Now they can jump out. So we had to go back and put some more on top of it. But anyway, that was in November. We bought, uh, I don't know, three or four hundred uh, prawn, the, prawn, the trout, brought them in and we raised them up through the winter. We started to do our harvest in March. We started advertising. This was really our first harvest we'd got to do. And we was gonna just have a fish day out at our house. Uh, we had three calls, uh, The what does it? Rotary Club, Lions, and Chamber of Commerce all wanted us to come in and meet with them and on their meeting days to put on the program. So we did that, thought that was pretty neat, but we was not prepared. We just had some pictures and the gift of gab, I guess. But we was trying to get them out, so we finally got the seine around them. We had a four-foot uh, dip seine, I guess you want to call it. There's some of them there. They come out pretty good, but uh, trout to eat in our neighborhood, it did not work. We got a, ended up, there's some of them there, uh, Chinese food market in Kansas City ended up taking the biggest end of them later on, but they wasn't quite big enough for them, was their issue with them. But we had a real beautiful crowd and beautiful day. There, there's some of the best pictures right there. The girls, they like to play with them, so... There's Russ. There, we started building our own prawn pond in April, and there's Mary and one of her buddies. She's out inspecting it one night. We decided to go ahead and start doing it. The pond itself uh, cost us a little over 6000 to dig it. It's a half-acre pond. We put this control structure in there, and I got it a shy drainage. It's water control structure. It's uh, twelve or 1400 I believe, up there. But the neat thing about it is there's gates in it. And we can raise and lower our water level by just opening it up and we can pull gates out. There's six, eight inch gates at a time. So we can do quite a little bit of different stuff with it. So we buried it in and uh, that was quite a fiasco. We had to buy a pump. We have to, most all of our water comes out of our big pond and right now we have to move it around because we don't have a well. So this is what our prawn pond looked like. We got, uh, we did apply for the grant. We got it. And it was to try to raise uh, bluegill and prawns in the same water because the, the bluegill will eat the prawn, there is no doubt about it. But we was going to try to do that to make more use out of our water, our electricity and everything else to actually make more money off our half acre pond. In theory it worked, but in reality it sucked. <laughs> when they brought our fish in, they put in some little guys that got in there and they got out of our cages. 
So there went a big chunk of our prawn. And our bluegill, worst of all learning, the labor, because it's only in here from June to October, the labor of putting the bluegill in here and taking them out just ain't hardly worth the trouble. Just leaving a prawn in there is actually a better deal, we found out. It helps on the money, but the labor comes into play there, and I don't, I don't really think it's going to pan out. That's some more of the pictures of them there. With their, we got two aerators in there running. That's my son, Eric. He's a feeding one morning. And I don't know if you can see. This is some of the prawn feed right there going out. We feed the fish and the prawn both at the same time. You know, like I say, in theory, it, it was a beautiful idea. But we also put some largemouth bass in in that year, and that's a picture of them eating. That was some of the bigger bluegill which we'd bought from the year before and that's the size of them in one year's time. This was some of them that come in. We bought them three and four inch ones. There's uh, some of the bass that we had bought this July. Put them in. Uh, they, this here is some pictures of some channel cats we had. We got some white ones and stuff in there. We're actually harvesting them right now. We got some of the... We've got them sold some of the uh, regular channel cat are weighing 14, 15 pounds. We've got them sold. The albinos they don't want, so we're just going to put them in the freezer. We had our prawn harvest on, what, October 15th? Okay, this is September. Yeah, this is a sample we took in September last year. Yeah, this is October 15th of the last year we had our first prawn harvest. That's some of them there. That's what they come out looking like. There's about 14 per pound, I think, and that we'll come up with. But our poundage was not good because of our bluegills attacked them. We just took an old feed bunk, and that's what we made our catch. Our pipe had come out, if you remember from the slides, uh, the forwards on the valve. It comes out in the ground, and we took an old feed bunk, and we did the legs and put some expanded metal in there. And it works pretty good. The water comes out and goes out to expanded metal, then blows the prawn out on the plastic bunk yet. And since we we got cattle and stuff, we have that stuff laying in the scrap pile, so that's what we used. These tanks, uh, we got a pair of them. We come over here to High Point, Missouri. A gentleman was going out of business. And we bought his supply. We bought quite a bit of stuff the first time around. We ended up using most all of it. We had the Relay for Life people come out, and they served lunch for that day. And Mary even got in a picture cleaning. That that day went on till dark cleaning fish. And we finally got tired of it. Mary had hired a, a pilot to come and take pictures that day. And it was a surprise to me. And I didn't even have enough sense to know it. I couldn't figure out what this guy was doing up there. He, he didn't have much of a life. He was just flying around. But this is a picture of a farm, the hay pile and everything out there. You can see the aerators in this one on the big pond to go on. We still got cages of bluegill in it. And that, that is the half-acre prawn pond. It's just almost dry at that point. In December, we went down to Frankfort, Kentucky, and joined the Prawn Association. And this is some of the pictures from that. Uh, we spent, what, three days down there, I believe. Uh, this is Laura, too, and... What's his name? Uh, I'm terrible with names today. Jim Tidwell. He's uh, out president of the Aquaculture Association in Kentucky State University. Uh, we'd met another guy down there, uh, Craig Umstrom. He is the one that uh, raises about all the prawns that ever even come up in this area. He's out of Florida. They got to be hatched in salt water, then they gradually transfer them into fresh water. And that's how he can actually bring them up here. He is working with these guys immensely, and this year, He's doing an all-male species. They've went in and did some work on the females, did a chromosome change. So they don't, I, I says, well, it's like an 80%. He says, no, it's 100% males that they're going to produce. And I don't know how or why or whatever. And for the most part, I, I don't care. That's his problem. They're going to cost a little more, but they'll grow better. Plus, you get rid of the deal with the sex fighting and this, that, and the other. And we're hoping that's going to work a little better. But this is some of the pictures from the Kentucky State. They do a big deal on paddlefish. In January, we had to get some bluegill up. 
we noticed all along all summer we had some damage to our cages. We would drained our big pond about five or six years ago and put a new water line and new overflow for the cattle in there. Apparently we didn't get them all drained, but this is the guys that we come out with. And they kept coming up in our sains when it was so cold, and most of them was like nine or ten pounders. And they did, did us enough damage so they, they went to the house too. But the biggest problem with them, they wasn't fit to eat. Since they are a channel cat and we're feeding the bluegill and everything else down there, the bluegill get a 42% uh, protein ration with high fat content. On channel cat, that didn't work because theirs just 32% with low fat. These guys just all turned to butter balls. Mary tried cooking them, and I think the dogs ended up with them finally. She could not get the fat out of them, so we learned we couldn't do that. This is a picture here of one of our first bluegill cages that we'd put in. Yeah, this is January of 12 in 10, June of 10. This is some of the first ones here. We sold these. These are actually going to a kids' fishing tournament is where they headed. There's 124 cubic feet there. That one cage harvested $1,600 gross. Okay, that to me, because we raise cattle, that to me is two calves at a good market, and that's, in our area, seven to eight acres of ground, not 100 feet, cubic feet of, yes? Gross or gross. Okay, what was your net? I don't know. I'm, I'm, we're guessing over 1,000. We did not, we're not real good bookkeepers at this point. We've got so much going on, we don't do. But that's still over 100, 100 cubic feet versus six or seven acres. That's not bad. Plus... One of the beauties of this, and what I like to stress to everybody else, it takes little to no machinery for us to work. We got a four-wheeler, a boat, and three or four or five-gallon buckets. That's 90% of what we got invested, other than the ponds. You know, and electricity. We don't, we got tractors and balers and all that, but it don't, we don't need none of that for this. And that's, that's the beauty, what could be done on such different levels. Somebody had two or three acres or 100 acres, you want some just for yourself or some to sell. You know, you, you can just do whatever you want to with this. The electricity, like I say, is the biggest deal. They got to be, they got to be populated at this density to make any money. And at that density, you're going to have to have the aeration. Unless you're just wanting to do some for your house, you know, and stuff like that. Um, we did have some... Uh, channel cat we'd kept in these. We'd bought some earlier. We had a fish fry here a couple of weeks ago. They'd been in about a year and a half in one of these cages. And they're suspended with uh, four or five foot of water under them. And them was the best catfish I'd ever had. They wasn't strong. They was clean, you know. They'd ate commercial food. They wasn't on the bottom. You couldn't beat them, you know. They was as good as anything you'd get in a restaurant. Anyway, this is part of our setup. Back to our our load of bluegill here. In February, we went to Nebraska City. We got asked to put this on. Went to the Laird Lodge up there. It was beautiful. We did about the same thing. Um, we started redoing our prawn ponds. We learned this in our meeting. Uh, they said to put this substrate up. And they can say whatever it wants. All it is is plastic construction fence. It depends what degree you got, what you, what you call it, you know. We went to Home Depot and bought it, some steel posts. And basically what this does, when the prawns go to molting, they, they lose their shell. So they need some place to go because everything's cannibalistic. They, they'll eat each other. They eat whatever's there. They can get up on this fence and get away, and it actually, like, doubles or triples your square feet of your pond. We went in to... Putting, we put 8,000 in here, but that pond actually turned, it's a half acre pond, actually turned into a darn near that one acre pond by putting this fence in, because that gives us more room for them to go. So anyway, that's what we did. We put it in the bottom. We did two ponds this year. We did a little one. We're experimenting with one. We have no aeration in it, a quarter acre pond with no aeration. This is still our half acre pond with all of our money in it. So that was a day's project. We hired uh, Dima Lay Boys. Uh, they come out and they helped us. What did I do? I think I hit something. I don't know. I did something here. It's locked. 
Anyway, the Demolay boys, they're a deal from the, is it Masons? They're a young, young kids group of the Masons. And they are real good. They come out and we need some help catching fish and stuff. They're a lot of fun. They're good kids. Uh, we have a lot of fun, water fights and the whole deal. But they, they're a good bunch of kids to help. And so they, they help us quite a little bit when we need it. So anyway, that was it. In June, we went down and we picked up our prawn. This year, I bought 11,000. They weigh these guys up in grams. We took this dually down there and all and on and on. I come home with eight pounds. Uh, there's got to be a way you can't put these in a cooler, you know, but you got to have it for the aeration. We got them divided up, and we just took another old feed bunk and made a, a chute. We just backed up to the ponds, and we got two sides. We put 8,000 in the big pond. There's a picture of a mare, which Mary had to, she had her camera extended out, but they're just basically transparent. The only thing you can see is this little dot in their eyes. If you pick them up, that's about all you can see. Like I say, there was 11,000, and they weighed 8 pounds when we put them in. This was our little pond we did in September, which is another old feed bunk. That's where they're coming out there. We had a lot better turnout. This is one here. We, we got this one at home in the picture. Uh, well, in fact, part of his claws are cut off there. You don't even show them. That's a... That's a female there. The other one was a male with the big blue. Yeah, this is a male here. Uh, these guys come out this year right around the 12, wasn't it, per pound? And Russ comes up from the school, and we let him do the weighing. We don't, we don't weigh him. You know, he, uh, he comes and helps us, but we want his figures. So here's some of the DMLA boys. They help the day of the harvest, just whatever. They actually got to go down and pick them up out of the mud leftovers. This is uh, Barney Fisher. He's our state representative. He come up, spent most of the day with us. This is some of our, what we do, because we have to sell our stuff live, not processed. Because we get in all the state regulations and stuff. So what we do, we sell them live. We got a three compartment sink. There's like four or five of the guys here. We weigh them up, you pay for them. If you want them clean, wonderful. There's a tip jar there, and we'll clean them, or you can come over and clean them. But as long as they're yours, and you either ask us to clean them or you clean them, it's, everything's fine. But we cannot charge, you know, or we cannot clean them, then sell them. As long as you buy them live and pay for them, it works. And that, that suits went to the health department, and I don't know who all we got that from. So we went to Kansas City. It's a used restaurant deal and we bought these sinks and some stainless steel tables. We started another pond since we got done. It's another half acre pond. We're going to stay with it. It is working. This year alone uh, we've sold in between twelve and fourteen thousand dollars worth of bluegill and we ain't even halfway through our first crop. They're just everything we did is at least a two-year cycle. When we started it we got kind of storied to how it's going to be a year a little over well, that got us in trouble. The bank and every place else, it didn't work. Two years into it, we can see it is working. We ain't touched our bass yet. We've got an order for them in uh, December and January to go to Illinois for part of them, what we're turning loose. Uh, we've had uh, bass all the way up to, Al no, the bluegill's been in Altoona, Iowa. Been down in Springfield. We've had a deal in bass at Bartle Hall from Ranger Boat. They come and got some for display up here. So it, it is working. It's just taking some time. We are building another pond, getting it started. So we was hoping to get two put in this year, but it probably ain't going to work. We had to shut down. We had to go back to the field. We're still, uh, that's what, we were supposed to be been here yesterday, but we was cutting silage. That was a picture last Sunday. I was mowing corn last Sunday, and this is what it was. It's volunteer corn. So that's where we was at yesterday instead of up here. We are still chopping silage. Um, this is in one of Mary's projects here. She raises boxers on the side also. That, that's one of her litters last year. <laughs> and they, they fit in real good with everything else we do. So it's beef, boxers, and bluegill. Just come and see us. And that's basically what we do. Yes? What's your marketing on the bluegill? I'm a little confused. 
Pardon me. What's your marketing on the bluegill? I mean, are you selling all of them live, and who are you selling them to? Uh, most of them so far has went to the FIDS kids fishing tournaments. Uh, we're working with Russ Gerlock. He's helping us broker them uh, out of Jeff City so far. Uh, so you're not selling them as food? We cannot sell them. Well, if you wanted to buy them as food, yes. You know, we can. But so far they haven't. They went to kids fishing tournaments. Because there ain't nothing any funner to catch in a big bluegill on a little rod and reel. So there ain't anything better yeah. to eat if somebody no. else plays it. Oh, yeah. no. I, I, I love them, but I know what we can get out of them, so we don't eat very many of them. So, but that's pretty well what we do. Uh, if anybody would be interested in coming over sometime, we'd, we're pretty proud of what we're doing because it is working. Where's Butler? Uh, straight south of Kansas City on 71. We're about oh, 50 miles south of Kansas City, just right there. So that's pretty well our story.